Hey everyone. So I've been spending some time lately revamping my drum room. I've been shuffling things around and I've made a couple of little additions like this vocal mic here. And I also took the opportunity to tear down the whole kit and set it up again from scratch to reevaluate and get everything really dialed in. And I figured that this would be a great time to come on here and share a couple of tricks that I've been using recently to get a better sound for my toms. One has to do with muffling and the other has to do with tuning. I've really noticed a difference in the focus and clarity that I'm getting, and hopefully these tricks are things that can help you out too. They're both really easy to implement, and they're pretty versatile as well. So what I'm going to do is take you through my usual starting point with my toms, then we'll go over the muffling technique, and then we'll talk about the little tuning trick that I use. I'm also going to let you hear some raw, unprocessed audio samples of each step, and then I'll do a head-to-head -head comparison at the end. And of course, I'd recommend using headphones to listen to these samples so that you can really hear the difference. All right, so let's go over where I like to start with my toms. I tend to like a more open, resonant sound, and I like having my rack toms tuned a little on the higher side and my floor toms tuned pretty low. The drum sizes for my kit are 10 and 12 inches for the rack toms and 14 and 16 for the floor toms. And right now, I have a pretty typical setup for drum heads. I have clear Evans G2s on top and clear Evans G1s on the bottom. Those are kind of your standard clear double and single ply heads. As far as tuning goes, I always start by just getting all of the toms nicely in tune with an even pitch at each of the lugs. You know, standard stuff. Now, as for the relationship between the drums, and we're getting a little into drum nerd territory here, so I apologize, but... I like to try to get somewhere in the ballpark of a fourth interval between my 10 and 12 inch rack toms, uh, a fifth between the 12 and the 14, and then a fourth again between the 14 and the 16. So currently the drums are somewhere around an E flat for the 10, a B flat for the 12, an E flat an octave lower for the 14, and a B flat an octave lower for the 16. I also like to tune the bottom head a minor third higher than the top. That usually gives me just the right amount of pitch bend. Now, you don't necessarily have to dive that deep into all of this. Again, it's drum nerd stuff, but I just wanted to share that so that you know where I'm starting from. So here's an audio sample of the toms tuned in the way that I just described with no muffling. And again, this is raw, unprocessed audio. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that tom sound, but I'd like it to be a little more focused and I'd like to shorten the sustain a bit. That brings us to the muffling technique. It's very simple. I use cotton balls. I think I first saw this on a Matt Garska video. It might have been from Minel. He was doing a playthrough of an Animals as Leaders tune. Uh, but by putting cotton balls inside the drum and letting them rest on the bottom head, you create a gentle dampener that cuts down a little on the overtones and quickens the decay. And you can make this more or less pronounced by adding or removing cotton balls. What I love about this is that even with quite a few cotton balls in the drums, they don't alter the general sound of the drum nearly as much as something like a moon gel or a drum tack. You can do some experimenting to figure out the perfect number of cotton balls for each drum. On my kit, I'm using four for the 10 inch rack tom and both floor toms, but my 12 inch rack tom is really resonant, almost to the point that it's annoying, so I use eight in that one. Here's an audio sample of the toms with the cotton balls added. Before we move on, there is one other benefit to using cotton balls for muffling, and it has to do with sympathetic resonance. When you go for a more open sound with clear heads, the toms tend to ring quite a bit when you play other parts of the kit. Now, a little bit of that is good. It kind of fills out the kit and makes it sound more lively and energetic. 
But if you have too much, it can really be a problem and muddy up the sound. Cotton balls really help to control this. By putting them in the toms, you're not only tightening up the sound of the individual drums, you're tightening up the sound of the whole kit. To demonstrate, here are two clips of me playing the snare and kick, first without muffling, second with muffling. And for the best comparison, this is raw audio from just the overheads. Listen for the ringing of the toms that accompanies each hit. The difference is really noticeable with the bass drum in particular. Adding the cotton balls brings me pretty close to the sound I want for my toms. All that's left now is to make the initial attack of the drums a little more pronounced. For that, we bring in the tuning trick. This one is even easier. All I do to bring out a little more attack from the drum is I take the lug that is closest to me and loosen it until it's just finger tight. Then, as I'm playing the drum, I gradually tighten it back up until it hits the sweet spot where I still have a nice open tone, but with a bit more of that initial smack. Now, doing this will lower the pitch of the drum, but if you want to preserve that, all you have to do is bring up all the other lugs around the drum just a little bit. And that's it. Here's an audio sample. This is what I would consider to be kind of my ideal tom sound coming from the starting point that I outlined earlier. Now let's go back and do a head-to-head -head comparison of the three different audio samples so that you can really hear the changes that were made. Okay, so a pretty substantial difference, at least to my ear. But again, the initial character of the drums is still there. We're just accentuating the qualities that we want to bring out a little more. I think that's what I love most about these two tricks. You really don't have to sacrifice much in the way of tone for more focus and clarity. Keep in mind, too, that we've just been comparing raw audio samples. When we go to the mixing stage and bring in things like EQ, compression, and so on, we can further strengthen what is already a much better initial recording. All right, that's all I have for this one. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you try these things out. Thanks for watching.